Thank you. Well, it's pretty easy to feel depressed, isn't it? Every week you feel as though you're going to read about another species that's been wiped out. Well, tonight you get a rare sighting because you are actually looking at a very, very rare species, a dot-com dinosaur. I was walking down the street recently and a younger person came up to me and said, I know who you are, sort of jabbing me, and I thought, hooray, I'm famous again for a little bit. You're that dot-com dinosaur. And I thought, oh no, age 45, that's not very good, is it? But in a way, they were kind of right, because I remember the world before the internet, which looking at the faces in this room, you might make me feel I'm probably insane, because what, was that really a world? And I'd like to tell you a bit about my journey through technology and why I feel like we haven't even begun to deploy it as we should in order to help the maximum number of people address the problems and the, come up with the solutions with the challenges that we're talking about this evening. So back in 1998, when I started my business, lastminute.com, it felt as though this new revolution was going to change the world, that we were going to create a redistributive, democratizing, incredible force where new voices, young voices like mine at that point, people from all over the world were going to be able to come up with different kinds of solutions to the challenges that they had, starting businesses, starting political parties, starting campaigns, starting movements. And it really did feel like an exciting time back in those early days, and I feel so lucky to have been a part of it here in the UK. But it would be hard to argue that that's where we'd ended up. I sort of lived in my weird bubble of building a company in those days. And I fast forward a few years, fell out of a car, my life changed quite a lot. I was very proud to become the UK's digital champion for prime ministers. And I started seeing the world of technology through a very different lens, because I was tasked to look at all the people that had never heard of the internet, had never used it, whose lives and the situations they were facing were really tough, and the last thing that they were going to be hassled about was whether they had a broadband connection. But it really started me on a journey to thinking about how we use technology and the people that we are empowering to come up with the solutions to the things that we need to solve in the future. I was really struck when I visited an extremely run-down area of Bristol here in the UK, the third poorest bit of the city and one of the most deprived pieces of the whole country. And when I went there, they said, we're going to show you our incredible new WYSI internet centre. And I was like, really? This is a very, very unhappy place. Do they really need an internet centre in this area? But actually, it was amazing. Because guess what? The people were using the tools provided by that media centre, internet centre, to build things that meant something to them. They were building websites to organise cleaning up all of the area, to put recycling together, to grow plants and vegetables that they would then sell because there weren't any Acado vans going to that bit of the world. And it was amazing to watch how just giving the tools to this community had enabled them to reinvent their futures. Now, I live with a marine conservationist who started a marine conservation charity called the Blue Marine Foundation. And our home life can be a bit frenetic, mainly because he spends the whole time saying to me, why are you going on about the internet? You should be worrying about the planet and specifically fish and the oceans. And I spend a lot of time saying, but I don't really know anything about the planet and the oceans and fish. I'm not a climate expert. And then the scales fell from my eyes, and I thought, screw that. Unless people like me, who understand a little about that technology, and I can't code, don't tell anyone, because some people still think I can, but I really can't. Unless people like me, who have a voice and understand a little bit about the tools of the modern age, don't keep fighting to encourage the maximum number of people to have access to these tools and use them, then I don't think we're going to have a very good chance to get the best possible future for all of us. And this is happening to a degree, but not fast enough. And what I find frustrating is that my own sector, the technology sector, is all about innovation, speed, pace, change at scale, making things better, inventing new things, and yet they seem somewhat absent from the technology and the climate debate. And I want to encourage all of you to think about using technology for what it was designed for, which is raising unknown voices, collaborating together, building tools to enable a more bright future. I think it's essential that we focus on the people that are hardest to reach, because inherently they are going to be the people most affected by climate change. And yet they are often the people that are excluded from the technology revolution. And this really matters. Half the world is still not online. It's easy to forget that in all of our filter bubbles and frenzied hashtagging, but half the world is still not online. And yet I 
don't need, you don't need to be a scientist to know that those people are the people that are going to be most directly affected by the climate crisis, partly because they may be living near a road or going to a school that has heavy pollution, partly because they may be in a fishing community that's been decimated because of the commercial fishing. There may be hundreds of other reasons, but we know that more access to more information and the tools that enable you to build a business, find like-minded people, organize your communities, are going to be the tools that are helpful. So I am demanding a more responsible use of technology. I want governments to put the internet and associated technologies at the heart of how they think about solving for the climate crisis. I see a worrying absence of technological vision in all of our political leaders. We need to be saying, it's not okay. We live in 20, 2018, not 1818. We can't solve the climate crisis just with bits of paper. We need everybody on the planet to have the maximum shot at suggesting solutions and creating solutions. And that will happen if we give them access to the internet, access to smart technologies, and we really fight to involve people in the conversations that perhaps before have never been involved. Now, this is happening in sporadic bursts. You know, I sit on the board of Twitter, and you can find hundreds of exciting hashtags and campaign movements that are being built. The Black Lives Matter campaign has got a subgroup all about black lives coming together to solve climate issues, and they have meetups and they do things in their local community. There's a brilliant woman here in the UK who started something called Zero Waste Week. I'm sure many of you are familiar. Again, sold massive traction and became a real campaign when she was using the social media tools that we have. But this is only the start. We can do so much more. Governments can do so much more if they embed digital technologies more in how they're thinking about the solutions. We can do more if we use technology in a more creative way. And I've absolutely no doubt that companies, particularly the technology companies, can do more themselves. So I believe passionately in technology. I'm not a techno-utopian. I don't think it can solve all the ills of the world, but I absolutely believe that we have not even begun to use it, what it was designed for, to help us solve for the things that really matter. We don't need more pizza delivery services. We do need fishermen to be able to understand the nature of the fish in the places that they work, to be able to sell their fish at the right price, and to be able to send that data so that it can be shared on global levels. So I urge you to think about technology, think about the spread of technology, not just here for the people in this room who I'm sure are all on your smartphones, but for the people who are far removed from the hallowed halls of the Royal Institution. I am optimistic. I heard recently that John Kerry, before his Oceans Conference, had a fish hackathon. I'm not quite sure how to abbreviate that. A fishathon? I'm not sure. But they came up with lots of incredible ways that technology could help fishermen around the world. Now, as you can tell, I've been brainwashed by my partner about fish. So if nothing else, we need to empower more people with technology so that he just stays off my case at home. Not only will we have a happier planet, but we'll have a happier Lane Fox household. So help me. Thank you. <laughs>